Good morning. Is this on? You can hear me. Awesome. Um, it is such an honor to be here today. I'm so excited to talk to you. My name is Kate Trumbull. I'm the Vice President of Advertising and Hispanic Marketing at Domino's. And today we're going to talk about pizza and potholes. And the funny thing is, if you think about it, two years ago, you would have never heard those two words mentioned together in a sentence. Like, I don't think ever. Fast forward, we launched this incredible campaign, and those words were mentioned over a billion times. So it's really, really a testament to great work, gets culture talking, gets people talking. And today, I'm going to walk you through how this idea came to fruition, all the hard work and the journey that we went through, <clears throat> and then a little bit about the lessons we learned. Hopefully, you guys can take away some, some learning for your own business and your own brands. But before I do that, <clears throat> I want to actually show you the beautiful film, the, the ad that our partners uh, at CPB created. Domino's delivery drivers are experts at handling bad roads. But those roads shouldn't ruin your pizza when you carry out. So we're doing something about them, starting with this one. If your drive home is rough on pizza, tell us at pavingforpizza.com so we can fix roads across the country. Then carry out large three-topping pizzas for $7.99 each. Awesome. So, you know, that ad, it had a DXP in it, but the whole point of the ad was to drive our carry-out business. And <clears throat> most of you, when you think about Domino's, probably think about delivery, right? That's our DNA. We, we launched our business 60 years ago, and it's kind of interesting, we basically invented food delivery, which, you know, in today's day and age, you can get food delivered, any kind of food, anywhere, but at that time, it was incredibly innovative and novel. <clears throat> you might also know us for our digital technology and, and being a tech leader, right? So we had, we launched emoji ordering and one tweet ordering, and that really helped us gain credibility as an e-commerce uh, company and as an innovator. <clears throat> the truth is, we have been partnered with Crispin for 10 years, which you can't say that about a lot of partnerships, right? A lot of agencies, they're, they're with their brands in a year or two years, and they switch over. Um, I think a big part of our success has been this partnership that's lasted so long. And it's really critical that we're always pushing each other. So we, we kind of evaluate an idea based on the, the, the fact that it makes us nervous, right? And this one was certainly an idea that made us nervous. And together, um, you know, we, we work to innovate and evolve the brand. <clears throat> and, uh, and it all comes down to really striking on a cultural tension. And that's where the magic happens. So this is our tagline, oh, yes, we did. You see it in a lot of the ads that we run. And it's really the answer to a question. And the question is, did a pizza company just do that? Actually, it could be, did a company just do that? And paving for pizza was definitely one of those. We launched that campaign, and I can't tell you how many people called me, texted me, and said, like, wait a second. You're not really paving roads, are you? Like, what is this? And <clears throat> we heard about that, that question in the media. It really just goes to show you that when we do really in incredible work, work that breaks through, it's surprising. And we have to hold ourselves to the standard, and we certainly do. <clears throat> and a great example of it, I can't believe it's been 10 years. It's actually been 10 years since we launched the new and inspired campaign, right? And that's when we came out and said, our pizza tastes like cardboard. It sucks. Um, and at the time, you know, people were really mistrusting of government. Um, people felt lied to. And by us coming through and saying the truth, we resolved a cultural tension at that time um, that, that really kind of stood out. A lot of companies improve their product, right? But not a lot of companies are willing to say the truth that their product actually sucked. Most recently, we launched Points for Pies, right? And the idea here, another oh yes we did, is we love pizza so much that we're going to give you points for any pizza you eat. Doesn't matter if you make it at home. Doesn't matter if it's from a big chain or the mom and pop. You scan your pizza, we'll give you points. You can get a free Domino's pizza without even ordering from Domino's. 
So many of these big brand actions, these kind of bold, oh yes, we did actions have helped us get to number one. You can see we've, you know, we've been number one now for over a year in the US, and we're actually number one across the world. And we've been able to get there because of our partnership with Crispin, because we keep pushing the limits and we keep innovating. But a lot of that focus has been on innovating around delivery and around technology and innovation around our ordering platforms. <clears throat> but something that you know, has come to be a bigger priority in the last few years is this, this sector of the business, which is carry out. And I don't think people really realize how big the carry out business is. So <clears throat> when you take a look, it's actually nearly two times bigger than delivery in terms of occasions, and it's over $7 billion bigger than delivery. So for us, we came to the agency and we said, guys, you've got to help us. We have to start innovating and doing things differently to start driving a higher carry out um, traffic for our business. And, you know, we're known for delivery. We believe in delivery. We want to keep growing and being experts there, but we've got to drive carry out as well. <clears throat> so, again, a lot of the things we've done have been dedicated to improving that ordering process. You guys probably know our tracker. People love tracker. It, it brings, um, you know, the transparency to the process. People have more control. They have more convenience when they can plan. We innovated around the DXP. It has a warming oven built into the vehicle. We had over 150 of these on the road. But the, really, the time has come. What are we going to do for carryout consumers? How do we go about that? And before we could answer that question, we had to start with something really important, is where you should always start, right? The consumer. What's motivating the consumer? What's that interesting thing about the carryout consumer that's different? Um, and so for us, we uncovered that carryout consumers want control. They want control over everything in the process, right? They have anxiety, you know, from start to finish when they're ordering, when they place the order, after they leave the store. And when you look at our culture right now, control is a hot topic across the board, right? We all want to control every detail of, uh, <clears throat> of getting a, an, you know, a Lyft or an Uber, right? We want to control every part of ordering on Amazon. And, and we're being allowed to do that. With Nest, you can control your temperature from afar. You can watch through your Nest cam, everything that's happening with your nanny and your dog. Um, I'm definitely guilty of that. And you can even customize shoes, you know, really ugly shoes. So at the end of the day, this was the breakthrough for us. We figured out the carryout insight. Um, it, it informed our business brief and informed our creative brief. <clears throat> And so the big, the big kind of aha for us was we needed to go beyond where we'd gone in the past, where it's about how you order, it's about coming into the store. Let's look at what happens after you leave the store, right? Like a lot can go wrong. For someone who needs a lot of control, many things can go wrong. There can be a freak rainstorm. You know, you can slip on ice. Um, and the first campaign we launched out of this insight was carry out insurance. Um, so I'm going to show you a bit of that spot to bring it to life. <clears throat> when you carry out, some things are out of your control. But with Domino's new carry-out insurance, we'll replace your pizza if it gets ruined after you leave the store. Carry out large three-topping pizzas for $7.99 every day. All right, so we told consumers, these ones that were anxious and want to control, hey, don't worry. If something happens and it's out of your control, we'll replace your, your pizza for free. And that really gave them a peace of mind. However, we wanted to go one step further. So <clears throat> we wanted to be able to guarantee that every Domino's pizza could make it home. Um, but we wanted to go where no company had gone before, and no pizza company, for that matter, had gone before. We really wanted to um, dive into infrastructure. So how do we improve infrastructure to make sure that your pizza gets home more safely in pristine condition? Um, <clears throat> and so the idea of paving potholes in the service of pizza was born. And we really saw this was an enormously interesting idea. Um, and, and certainly one that would be an, oh, yes, we did if we could pull it off. Because bad roads really shouldn't happen to good pizza. 
And if you think about it, like, is there a bigger, more universal enemy to individuals than potholes? Like, it's incredible, no matter where you go in this country, people hate potholes. They will talk to you a long time about their hatred for potholes and the fact that no one's doing anything about it. So, okay, got it, great idea. The question is now what? And as you can imagine, if you were sitting in that 360 review with us with our agency partner, CPB, you know, we all, most of us saw that this was a big idea. There was certainly some skepticism. But more than that, there were a million questions. Like how in, you know, how in the world are you gonna pull this off? How, how are you gonna pay for this? How much does it even cost to, to fill a pothole? Um, would city governments do it? Um, how do we do this in a really authentic way that's not gimmicky? So the list goes on and on. And what I'll tell you is um, Crispin really, really believed in this idea and they were not willing to take no for an answer. Um, and that's why we were able to pull it off. So they turned it from idea to action um, and really became, experts in public works and red tape. I mean, it was really, really incredible. Um, they developed a formula where we would give $5,000 grants to each of these towns that they could use to fill potholes. And in, I learned this, um, in, in small municipalities, you know, you could, fill a, you could fill 40 potholes with $5,000. It can go a really, really long way. Um, so, <clears throat> You know, we had to, before we can make this a national campaign and really feel good that we were doing an oh yes we did, we had to prove that you could get a town or a few towns on board. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, Crispin had to do over 1,300 cold calls to local governments to try and try and try to convince people that this was a good idea. And I think the big learning was like, hey, turns out we don't have much credibility in this space. Like, <laughs> A pizza company, are you kidding? Why would a pizza company be filling potholes? Um, and so there was a ton of skepticism. And, and to be honest, there were a lot of government leaders who, who felt like it would make them look bad. Like, why can't I fill the potholes? I should be, our budget should be able to do that. Why do we need a corporation or a big company to come in and help us with that? Um, but the key was we had to secure one partner. And we finally did that, and that was Bartonville, um, Texas. And they were amazing partners. Um, and you know, it was really true. We were offering money to fill potholes, and uh, and once we got them on board, it was incredible. Um, other other cities and towns were willing to take take a chance. They weren't the first, um, and it was all about showing, not telling. We really wanted to show um, <clears throat> that uh, this is real um, before we could actually go out and make a TV campaign about it. We needed to show that we actually did something. <clears throat> So let's watch a little bit of the coverage. Domino's Pizza has launched a new campaign. But Domino's is taking on a new job that seems to have nothing to do with pizza. To fill, get this, potholes all across the United States. It's called Paving for Pizza Initiative. Pizza company says it's already patched up 40 potholes there in Milford. So this is just like a snapshot. There was so much coverage. I mean, there was national coverage, but what was really incredible was all the local coverage. <clears throat> and something that I think really helped it bring, bring this to life was the branded asset kit. So we would send this to any market that signed on, and it had these great stencils that they could use after they paved, had a ton of stickers, we had gift cards for uh, free pizza for the crew, and each market did it in a really unique way. So our franchisees were incredibly excited about this opportunity to connect with the community, so they'd show up with their teams and their crews and they'd bring more pizzas. Um, as you can see, a franchisee here on the bottom right. Um, and you know, it was just a wonderful way to take a national campaign and really localize it. <clears throat> and so once the, ca the campaign gained momentum, um, there were so many nominations. And what was impressive is local governments, local newspapers, local media were also nominating towns because they really saw the need. Um, so, and even Bernie Sanders talked about it. So it was one of those things that um, grabbed, it was like grabbing fire. There was a real cultural tension here um, that consumers and, and local governments latched onto. And it was really exciting to see um, the engagement, right? So we had nominations from all 50 states and we actually had one, um, one city that earned over 7,000 submissions alone. 
Jackson, Mississippi. Um, so I was really blown away because I thought, man, I expected paving to be so huge in northern states where you get tons of snow and ice, but man, there are bad roads, like I said, everywhere across this country, and we heard from consumers across the country. <clears throat> so let's talk about results. Marketers, we all care about what was the outcome. Um, we got over 137,000 submissions and over a billion media impressions in just the first three months alone. And if you talk to Jenny, who runs our PR department, she'll tell you this has been the gift that keeps on giving. Because every time we go out and pave in a market, the local market covers it on TV, um, online, and, and consumers get excited all over again. <clears throat> so you know, the truth is we knew we struck a cultural chord, a cultural tension. And when this became bigger than we ever thought it would be, we realized we had a responsibility to actually make it bigger. So we went to our leadership team and we made the case to them that as the number one pizza company, we really needed to take a stand and say like, if anything gets in the way of great delicious hot pizza getting to your door, you know, that we're not gonna stand for it. And so we went ahead and we expanded the program to all 50 states. <clears throat> And so to date, right, we've, we've done it, we've nominated in 50 states, we've issued 45 grants, and you might say, well, why are only 17 cities paved? It's up to the local market, the local town, when they want to pave. And as you can imagine, I, you know, I'm from Michigan, where it's still winter right now in May. Um, a lot of them wanted to wait till the summer to actually do the paving. <clears throat> all right, so after all that, um, all those cold calls, all the red tape with government. Um, what did we learn? What did we take away? What could maybe you apply to your own businesses? It's really critical to lean into the consumer insight. It always starts with a consumer. And so taking the time to do the research and understand this nuance about control with our carryout consumer um, kind of you know, gave us the opening to come up with this big idea. Trust your creative agency. You know, they, they sometimes bring things that are, we feel like are way out there and way crazy, and that's why we pay them, right? That's what we want from them. And that, that tension, um, you know, exists and it should exist. And every time we go with them and, and we embark on an oh yes we did, um, it pays dividends. It really does grow our business and build our brand. And then finally, it's really interesting. Um, as we did this work, we heard from consumers that they feel like Domino's really cares about them and that we really care about their communities. And so when you, we reflect back on kind of the work that has made the biggest difference and driven the most sales, a lot of it has to do with doing something that truly makes a meaningful difference for consumers. And um, you know, whether it was the new and in, in inspired campaign, whether it was points for pies, um, or whether it was uh, paving for pizza. The one other one that's not on here that I will mention is we were really careful. Um, the media wanted to make this about infrastructure and politics and government not doing what they wanted, you know, we want them to do. And for us, it was just not the place we wanted to play, right? We don't, we're not interested in getting political. We care about pizza. We love pizza. So everything we did within this campaign and every message was about our commitment and love in the service of pizza. <clears throat> so the other really exciting thing when you have a big breakthrough, oh yes we did idea, is it doesn't just have to end with the TV campaign. What we found with this one is there was such um, interest in local PR and such interest from our franchisee body that um, you know, we decided to create a toolkit that every time a franchisee opens a new store and we're opening a ton of new stores, they actually go pave roads um, near that store, do a PR release, get out in the community, and it really establishes them um, as more than just a, a pizza owner, someone who's making a difference in the community. So with that, I will just leave you with what is the big oh yes we did for your business? Thank you. Thank you.